session number 46 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. How are you guys doing? How are you feeling? Excited? Ready Super for more cave shenanigans! Cave Super shenanigans! Excited. Oh, is that Dennis? Super excited. Oh, Today super is the day where we'll find out who our new cleric will be. <laughs> First person cleric to die. Or clerics. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome, welcome. Today's uh, uh, summary in absence of the person who should have done it, Austin. Uh, <laughs> I hope you watch this about it later. Um, it's going to be done by me, and it's really just really simple, because last time, uh, really, the majority of things that went on were combat in a certain cave where you went for a certain simple mission. Uh, you were just trying to help your, your new bird friends whose eggs have been stolen by some, by some creature in this cave. Uh... And as you were exploring it, you were attacked by uh, stone giant lizards that spit la acid on you. Uh, you fell into a pit of dust where uh, a giant stone snake threatened to kill you. Uh, and you, uh, you fought more of their kind. You found one, uh, a giant even bigger lizard that was undead and uh, um, held back by broken chains and upon its death uh, you were approached by one more creature an undead chained dragon small compared to the ones you have met so far uh, but it looks how do I put this? Hungry. Huh. What is a chain to? Can you remind me? What is what? What is a chain to? Uh, nothing. The chains are just like... Itself. Going along. Huh. Yeah. The Its wings are held down by the chains. Um, but it does look like there is... Uh, uh, the ones that are tied to its neck and to its legs... Uh, I just sort of like, uh, they they don't go anywhere. Uh, and yeah, that's where we're at. So, um, here is the, or not, not yet. I suppose I will ask you in this brief moment, uh, where you see the dragon approach uh, what your immediate plan is uh, back off I'd say the dragon sees us yeah like oh it. yes it, it, <laughs> yeah. It, it saw Talix earlier and Talix has been rushing towards you guys and dragon opposite has been following um, do we, sorry, maybe I missed this detail, because it's, like, it's coming from, uh, behind us. Do we know where it came from? Mm -mm, no. Okay, it didn't, like, climb out of the floor, fall from the ceiling or something. Okay. You have seen it just walk. <laughs> and you, you, uh, you heard, like, in, before it turned around this corner, you, you heard, like, the claws and the chains scraping against the floor. Uh, Tekka would hear Talix's cry, and I think we'll start to try to leap over this giant me, dripper body yeah, to investigate whatever this road is. Is it Dennis the dealt the final blow? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you come around the corner, you can see just, um, be, uh, yeah, behind this wall, you can see that the cave continues forward uh, through a passageway that is slightly narrower than the ones you've come through so far, but seems to keep going. And there is um, more light 
further in the back. Um, of, of various colors that you can see. It continues. Follow me. And directly behind you, you're just hearing the scraping. Getting a little bit closer and a little bit closer. Yeah. Um, does That's the... It. Does the chain dragon, is it like, uh, like stone? Like most other things around here? Is it that kind of? Uh, no. Its scales are, um, gray, but it doesn't seem to be, uh, a, a stone coloration. It just looks like a sickly kind of color. Okay. Uh, I guess because Pontifex is somewhat dragon obsessive lately, uh. Can he discern anything like, uh, like if dragon assume breath weapon, uh, does he see like acid coming out of its face or, or anything like that? Um, He's trying to discern some, some information about this dragon in case we have to fight it. Sure. Give it, a, give it a quick perception check. We'll go with perception as it's like an on the fly kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 18. Um, there is a little bit of this almost a smoky build up around its mouth that is a green color. And uh, the dragon itself smells putrid. Um, mm. This okay. is. You felt things like these in magic uh, before. This is. Uh, it, the scripture reeks of uh, undeath, and uh, even its breath does. Okay. Ooh. Oh. I can work with this. <laughs> what do you mean you can work with us? Can we follow <laughs> Chekhov? <laughs> which, which would leave? Okay. <laughs> At least we have the same idea. I wasn't sure. <laughs> All right, and uh, Rook will probably wait a little bit till others pass him, and then follow Tekka. We're taking okay. one in the back. All right, everyone going after Tekka with Rook being the the one in the last one in line. Uh, sure. Yeah, Pony is having to hobble a little bit because he's slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, let's say that as you're all running down to scale that Tech has been pointing at, uh, Rook will have to roll a constitution saving throw. Constitution? Mm -hmm. Oh, I got scared for a second because I was on the wrong sheet. <laughs> oh no, what are these stats? <laughs> it's it way lower constitution than mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eighteen. Okay. Um. On an eighteen. Um. Uh, Brooke, being at the very back of the group as you're running, uh, you're the one who hears uh, uh, the very um. Words. Hold on. Um, I know the word. Horse. Yes, horse and 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 horse and rasping kind of a breath behind you. Uh, something that sounds vaguely like a deep inhale, and then almost it, the the exhale that follows is kind of soft and it's voiceless. Uh, but despite the the lack of actual power behind that breath, uh. You can feel your own uh, skin, like the back of your of your legs and of your arms. Um, it's almost a burning sensation. Uh, it stings as if old wounds are being reopened. Uh, you take 11 points of necrotic damage during your escape. I have a question. Yes? With the Rite of the Dawn, I'm, I have resistance to necrotic damage. What does that mean? Oh, it means you take five. Ayo! Nice. <laughs> you have resistance to necrotic damage? <laughs> mm -hmm. But only <laughs> with the ride of the dawn. 
right? You do yeah, have your yeah. weapon and the right active, so that counts. Yeah. And uh, I would want to take back your minis. I'm includes. never specifying my position again if that's what I take. <laughs> <laughs> includes Pip and the birds and Lamia, which I'm just going to hear. Uh, everyone has been taken. Wonderful. And, uh... I guess I should do this for safety. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Pekka, ahead of you, uh, the, after a short, uh, uh, narrow passageway, the cave opens up again. The first thing that you, you lay your eyes on are the sources of light that you had spotted further in the distance. Those colors that you had seen, uh, they appear, uh, before you as these uh, rocky pillars, or uh, rather than rock, it's uh, it's like they're huge natural gemstone formations, uh, so bright and and colorful, and they're placed in a uh, in what otherwise feels a natural kind of positioning, almost like in a circle, uh, with one of them not emitting light and being collapsed. Uh, this cave looks otherwise like simply a continuation of the previous one, although colors are getting more vivid, the stone is getting more blue, there's more mushrooms and flowers surrounding you. Uh, and in this vast opening, you can all place your minis <clears throat> somewhere on this side of the board. Is a uh, 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 tunnel big enough to fit the dragon? Uh, yeah. You hear its scales scraping against the stone as it's coming after you. Almost at a... <clears throat> uh, almost at a, at a slow pace. Uh, like it's, it's giving chase, but taking its time as well. Um, once you've all positioned yourselves, you all get one turn to prepare. God. So we're gonna oh. just shoot it all at once? Gosh. I don't I know. I would say that's our best shot, right? Just try to take it out in one blow. Let it come out, let me take a big swing at it. And then everyone else either swings or shoots. God. Yeah, I, I, I can't think of a better plan. But Does it seem like we're faster than this dragon? Yeah. It's... It seems like it's uh, moving at your pace, Pontifex. So we aren't faster than the dragon. But you all are. <laughs> We're not leaving you behind. No. The only worry I have with just running is that this all could be as trapped as before. And then we're really doomed. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. It definitely could be. Gosh. Yeah, the only other thing I, I... There's no really good place to hide here either, right? So, yeah, I guess there's not... I can't think of another option immediately. Because if there's something fancy going on with these gemstone formations, we're not going to figure that out in one turn anyway, so... Yeah, yeah Pontifex is a little bit distracted with this dragon business to, to look at shiny stones. Yep. Pip is probably entirely fascinated by the stones <laughs> and immediately forgets the dragon exists. <laughs> you mean the dragon doesn't have petrifying breath? He doesn't make rocks? I don't care anymore. <laughs> By the way, he, uh, you guys did have a chance to pick up the one pebble that Pippa dropped earlier. Okay, good. He wouldn't have left otherwise. He would not have <laughs> left otherwise. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we're going to fight this thing, then. I suppose we should spread out. I need to be up close. So I'll stay at the entrance. Yep. 
So okay. just stay, don't stand next to each other. Try to flag it. Stay out of the breath. Let's get into uh, initiative order then. Uh, get a full round, position yourselves, hold your attacks or whatever you want to do. Uh, so we're starting with Talix. I'm gonna assume he is at least staying a little bit back. Mm -hmm. This giant mushroom uh, is also emitting light. This one, bright white, and uh, from directly beneath it, it's almost blinding. Huh, so... Uh, okay. So we can't see, or people that look at it are getting blinded? Um, well, keyboard being almost, but... Hmm. Uh, Matt, are you changing your initiative? Uh, yeah. It's no. already set. We're continuing with what we had before. Oh, okay. My Do you remember what it was? Uh, Wait. yeah, uh, it still has it in the initiative tracker. Okay. That was the old one. Okay, all right. Sorry, my mistake. Um, oh, you're fine. I it should have been more clear. Um, so to, to answer your question, Dennis, um, mm -hmm. being directly beneath this mushroom, like any, mm. uh, like in its immediate surroundings, uh, would give everyone disadvantage to attack rolls on creatures that are there. Um, oh. And the other way around, like if Talix was trying to hit something, as long as it's close to the light, he would have disadvantage. Even aiming at something else. Okay. Yeah, you're still way beyond that, I think. Okay. Um. Hmm. The bomb, yeah. Vamya is being reasonably brave right now. Um, Brooke expressed the desire to like just jump the dragon, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, so she'll be like on the opposite side of the cave from him and just like nod at him and prepare her axe. Um, and just be ready to strike. What's the job of the burbs? Uh... How did the... Uh, the birds aren't, like, magically inclined to be with us anymore, right? Uh, they are. Oh, okay. Uh, and are the, were they inclined to, to help Talix? Or oh, Pip? wait, they, uh, they weren't magically inclined. One of them had a magical thing going on, but, uh, yeah, that one is not happening yeah, anymore. Yeah, and I thought that right uh, But they were... They were... They are allied with you. Right. Just non -mag not magically, and they were listening to Pip's orders thus far. Okay. Um, and they have yet to find the rags. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, I think both of them are going to stay. Uh, or no, they're going to go over where Brooke is. Okay. Uh, they have different initiatives, uh, oh. but it doesn't particularly matter for this one round. Oh, that, I see. I see uh, what we're doing. Okay. Is it the? Uh, is it all yeah, the it'll any move action? over there, and I guess it'll... Uh, which space is Brooke actually in? Oh, good question. I would say... I want to... So she, so the dragon doesn't see me immediately and has to come out. So if that counts as that, then he would be standing here. Otherwise, he would be standing a bit behind. But then he would have to walk up. Um, if you want to be able to hit it, consider that the dragon occupies, like, four squares. Uh, so you would want to be, like, in uh, melee of this. Okay. <coughs> you are, like, you okay, know, then, yeah, sure, behind the, bird the wall, will, but... The little flightless bird will, will hobble over here and... I think this is I think this is brave dad wanting to save the egg, so he's like squaring up. <laughs> he's like gonna play chicken with a train. Uh, 
<laughs> He's trying to like make eye contact with this dragon and stand his ground. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. What about Tekka? Yeah, Tekka is leaning his shoulder against the cavern wall and prepares to strike with his core staff. Okay. I'll just put you on this spot. Mm -hmm. And Baruch, you're good where you are? Yeah. Okay. What is Pip's plan? Oh, that's me. Uh, Pip is going to... Uh, Pip's pretty quick. Uh, yeah, he's going to uh, over here. Uh, he's going to use his bonus action to make his magical rocks. Uh, um, and then he is going to, I guess, ready an action to. Uh, yeah, he's going to ready his mind sliver cantrip. Okay. The mom bird? Yeah. Uh, mama bird is, uh, yeah, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna stand there with Papa. <laughs> Damn. Uh, but mom bird is actually, uh, I think she's like a, a step closer than dad bird, uh, trying to one up <laughs> dad bird a little bit because mama is pissed. <laughs> okay. Leaving us with Squeak. Uh, Squeak is going to go invisible. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Good plan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Squeak's going to go invisible and. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to move. Uh, not there. He's pretty fast. So this is a messed up path. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Yeah, he's going to go invisible and then also go stand in this light. Okay. Or fly in this light. Pontifex? Uh, Pontifex is going to... Uh, he's going to move here, and then he is going to uh, use his action to cast... Uh, yeah, he's going to. He's going to use his action to cast a uh, Flaming Sphere uh, upcast to third level. And with uh, acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. Let's do let's do the thunder. It's tried and true. He's gonna make the wub wub. Wub wub. Um, and it's gonna be. Okay. Uh, yeah, right here. Wub wub. Wonderful. Um, to simplify things, let's move on and refresh. So now we have Cloud of Fallen's turn. Oh, we're, wow. All the way down here. Right to the bottom. Nice. Uh, with everyone ready and in position, uh, you wait with bated breath and you hear the scraping against the cave walls uh, as the creature approaches, not silently in its walk, but silently in the sense that it doesn't roar, it doesn't call out to you. Uh, there is no voice that echoes through the walls, there is just a slow approach of a dragon. That is tracking you down. And at the moment when its head pokes through the exit of beautiful Death. the exit uh, of this cave, that is when you all strike. Uh let's for those of you who are holding an action, let's resolve them in uh, initiative order. Yeah. Uh, Talix wasn't holding any action, yes? Oh. I think he would have. Oh, okay. What was it? 
I was... If you tell me that it's not Talix like enough, then I won't do it. But I was thinking of potentially holding up Windwall and then have it just like going from the point where he is into the cave entrance or into the tunnel entrance so it only hits him. Okay, what would be the effects of that? Uh, mainly damage. On a failed save, so he has to do a strength saving throw. Strength saving throw for the dragon. Mm hmm. Okay, so I have an eight. Uh. Good question, what it is. Where do I see that? Again. It is spelled uh, tab at the top, it's a 14. I got it, 14. Yep. So he will roll. Let's see. Oh, how do I remove one of the dice again? Got it. I think right click. Yeah. So seventeen bludgeoning. Seventeen bludgeoning. And that also means that the strong wind keeps fog, smoke, and other gases at bay. Small or, sm small or smaller flying creatures or objects can't pass through the wall. Yeah. It's only relevant for squeak, basically. Yeah, yeah. The damage is bludgeoning. Okay. Um, as Talix's um, magical words echo throughout the cave, um, the dragon almost seems to be uh, pushed back by the sudden uh, gust of wind. Uh, it, its body hits the side of the, of the cave that it just popped out of, uh, um, and its, its mere weight ends up leaving an indent uh, in the wall. I can't check the spell slots, by the way. Oh, I'll do That's it. Cheap. Okay. And you can refresh it, and it will be there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Devamia's attacks. Oh, hey, flanking! Mm-hmm. Which saved her from a natu natural one. Look at that. So one is a hit, and the other... Uh... Is that a hit? Yeah, it is! Oh, wait. It's a reaction attack. She only gets one blow through. Yeah. But it is a good hit. Uh, as the dragon gets pushed back by the wind, uh, she leaps forward and uh, slashes down with her axe. And instead of drawing blood, what comes out of the dragon's body from the freshly opened wound is dust. Does the dust get blown away? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Nice. Uh, time for the dad That's bird. Good. Dad bird. Uh, dad bird is going to to he's going to bird. Uh, let me pull up. Burp. Bird will burp. Uh, oh, they have pack tactics. Oh. Mm-hmm. So this seventeen hits, uh, and it does. Uh, oh, it must make a strength save. Okay, nineteen. Okay. Uh, okay, it succeeds in the strength save, so nothing happens from that. But it does take ooh ten points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Oops. Added to the right. I almost said the <laughs> damage to the armor class. All right, ten points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, as the, the first of the birds just slams its stone wing into the dragon's body. Oh, oh no, no, never mind. Sorry, go. Okay, take a held action. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, yeah, Tekka has kind of been leaning. 
holding his weight against the wall, and then he does a, ro- a swing and a rotation with his quarter staff, striking against chains, holding this dragon. Let's see how that is. This also fra- uh, flanking. Oh uh, yeah, it counts. Okay, cool. Oh, uh, I I should not uh, roll that. Give me one second. I'll be it. <laughs> I rolled wrong. There we go. Twenty-three hits. Uh... That's six damage. Blood journey. Um, Peck, I'm perfect sync with everyone else. Uh, you slam your staff down and you end up coughing a little bit as some of the dust uh, gets in your face. Solid hit, Brook. Mm-hmm. Is it... Uh, one second. I also get advantage, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nineteen. Is it counting as an undead creature? Because then I get like the extra hammercraft die. Yes. Cool. All right. That's five wow. radiant and thirteen slashing and radiant let's go nice and 13 slashing uh add it up Ooh. uh you strike through uh what you strike true <laughs> your your weapon glowing just as brightly uh, these other, source, other sources of light in the cave. Uh, it digs into the dragon's side, like cutting through butter. Um, kind of unnervingly, despite the large gash you have left in the dragon's side, uh, this creature is not reacting to pain the way creatures should. It's like it's... Besides being thrown around a little bit by, by some of the strongest blows, it's not really expressing pain uh, in the slightest. That doesn't sound good. Uh, Pip? Did, did uh, Pip, Pip have is, a reaction? Uh, yeah, he's using his Mind Sliver, um, so it needs to make a DC 15 int save. More intelligence. Let's see. 17. Uh, so it succeeds. Nothing happens. Okay. Drat. Pip, <laughs> Pip is uh, <laughs> uh, very hurt. So his focus was uh, a little lacking. It's uh, smarter than the average so. bear. <laughs> <laughs> what about the mom, the mom bird? Uh, same thing. Smashing its face in as they do shield bash where, where is that? can you give me a physical description of these birds like <laughs> I, I i learned last session towards the end that they're flightless uh they have like a shield on them their wings are petrified that's why they cannot ah. use them for flight but they use them defensively and offensively sort of like a large stone shield i see okay then yeah he's gonna, gonna shoulder check this dragon um <laughs> 20 hits. Uh, it needs to make that DC 14 strength save. Uh, 20. Uh, again, nothing happens, and it takes 9 points of bludgeoning damage. Got it. Uh, who's left? Just Pontifex's reaction. Uh, he did not have one. Uh, it was his action to cast the Wub Wub. Okay. Um, so picture this. Picture that we are currently at the dragon's turn. Uh, this is the moment when it arrived. 
Uh, so that's... Oh, sorry. Um, whenever Pip made the his little magic stones on his turn, uh, it would have been okay if Squeak took one of them. Uh, yeah. Cool. That's fine. Um. Right. So, it's a dragon's turn. Just kidding, your friends. Uh, wait, those are all <laughs> held actions from the previous yes, round. Those yeah, were, those were all the held actions that triggered when the dragon arrived. Oh, I see, I see. And it's arriving on its turn. I see. Mm -hmm. So we'll actually, like, go to squeak after this. Perfect. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Oh... Mm. That is not correct. Why is it showing me in the wrong spell? Here it is. Uh, okay, a little risky. Maybe later. Um, the uh, strangely silent and, and calm dragon, despite the wounds it just received, uh, as it strolls into this... Uh, uh, opening of the cave uh, with its empty eye sockets it almost feels like it's looking around uh, and uh, picking its targets which will be the Vamia for the first and Teka for the second remind me that the Vamia has, has the Vamia taken any hits uh, the Vamia has taken one hit and she has been healed, so she's in pretty good shape. Okay. Uh, as she gets absolutely clawed by this dragon. Oh. Oh. A low damage roll. Um, but the dragon pulls itself up onto its uh, hind legs and... Uh, with all the weight of its body, lowers the left leg onto the orc uh, and uh, slashes her armor open down her shoulder, leaving a large bleeding gash behind. Pekka, mm -hmm. with the same downward motion as one leg... Uh, and one set of claws is falling on <laughs> her. Uh, its mouth tries to close in on you. This is a 23 to hit. That hits. Uh, the bite deals 18 piercing damage. <laughs> Um, and uh, six necrotic damage. It almost feels like it's sapping the life out of your body, in addition to just the physical pain uh, of being bitten by something that has uh, enough power in its jaw uh, to probably be able to take off one of your limbs. It doesn't bite down on you like a predator would as if it's uh, uh, trying to eat you despite this sort of like oh you know what give me an inside check Tekka okay uh, let's give that a shot okay there is some kind of hunger that seems to be leading, it, leading its actions, as if uh, this was, uh, you know, just just another animal. Uh, and right now you're feeling very much like a dragon food. Okay, having witnessed all of this, Squeak, what would you like to do? Uh, Squeak is going to uh, move out of the... Is this out of the light? Yep. Uh, it's uh, like a square around it, so it's just four by four. Okay. Uh, then he's going to come out of this light, even though he's invisible. Uh, and then he's going to uh, 
throw the the magic stone. Let me check this thing. Uh, does this have advantage because he was invisible? Let me see. It does not. Okay, so where is it? Plus. Okay, squeak hits. Uh, and this does six plus this and number. Uh, what are Squeak's stats? What is Squeak's passive? Six. Is passive like perception? Yeah. Uh, eleven. Eleven. Okay. Uh, that's it then. Uh, okay. Yeah. He, he just beans him with the rock. Mm hmm. Take that. Pontifex. Uh, oh, and then flies back. Okay. Uh, Pontifex. Uh, question. My sphere is able to... Uh, let me read it exactly. My sphere is able to... I can direct it over barriers up to five feet tall, and I can jump it across pits up to ten feet wide. Would I be able to leap this orb uh, back here? Um, it could pass to Brooks right. Let's yeah, yeah. like go around here yeah. and then kind of leap. Yeah, let's climb see. This is not over. over hmm, this is not above the over the height that he could cover. So yeah, perfect. Sure thing. Uh, Ow. Yeah, he's going to do that. Uh, wub 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 wub. Uh, wub I can't wub, wub, wub. physically get oh, it back yeah. there. Uh, I'll I'll try to. Is it space? would have to be back here yeah. Yeah. there and then uh and then with the rest of the movement uh i'm going to mash it forward uh to smash it to the dragon mm -hmm. smash uh it needs to make a uh dc 16 deck save okay this is, uh... 11. Uh, so, it so never mind so that. The dragon chooses to succeed. Uh, fair enough. Uh, then it will only take half. Uh, so it will take three. Wow. Only prevented Powerful. four damage. <laughs> Not we, the best use these. of a legendary resistance. No, it's perfect. Uh, <laughs> and then for you, it is. This is great. Uh, and then Pontifex is then going to use uh, his action to cast a cantrip. Uh, okay. He's going to cast Mind Sliver. Oh. Uh, DC 16 int save. Intelligence. Oh. Okay. Ten. It's no use, Professor. He's too smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not smart enough. <laughs> Twelve. Oh my god. Well, should have seen that one. Uh, yeah. Twelve damage. Yeah. Don't use the legendary resistance on the on the third level spell. Use it on the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly. What a what a uh, foolish mistake I made. No kidding. Uh, there you Is go. It, it takes damage? 12 points of psychic damage, yeah. And it subtracts 1d4 from the next save that it makes before the end of my next turn. Okay, next save. 1d4. Remind me next time I roll a save. Oh, the okay. initiatives did get updated to the change values. Uh, those are wrong. Uh, Pontifex is supposed to be a minus 1, and Pip is supposed to be a 14. Okay, let's just... Let's just change uh, Pip's... Uh, this Pontifex is basically fine. Uh, 14 you said for Pip? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. 
Uh, and then, uh, do these mushrooms like provide some kind of cover? Uh, yeah, they occupy their space. So if you were to break line of sight with them, uh, that that would apply. Then yeah, the professor is gonna get behind <laughs> the big okay. mushy. These these are these are some pretty tall mushrooms. Um, is the orb within five feet of Tekka, or would I have been able to move it a little bit more this way? Um, it can be over things, so I'd say we can have it be over here. It's just, okay, yeah, uh, perfect. Uh, slight headache, but we got it. No, that's the turn. Sorry, wizard stuff. <laughs> wizard stuff. Okay, cool. Before we move on to Talix... Uh, uh, the dragon is going to take a, a legendary action uh, to make a bite attack against the, uh, the dad bird. Oh no. This is a, an 18 to hit. That does hit. Dang, these birds have big AC. They're petrified. They, yeah, they yeah, have partially. They're they have rocks. They have shield wings. So this will be 16 piercing damage plus 6 necrotic. Okay. Um, am I tracking the hit points in Tindy Beyond? Uh, yeah. Okay. I do believe you they were in hurt in previous encounter. Yeah, they were injured, so I was, I was making sure. Yeah, 16 plus uh, 6. So it took 16 bludgeoning. Uh, uh, well, the, I, I don't know if I can adjust 16 is it. piercing. Yeah, and I can't actually adjust these on the D&D Beyond. Oh, crap. Uh, do it on a piece of paper. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it or takes eight somewhere. from the piercing and six necrotic, so 14. Got it. Okay, now it's Talix's turn. Mm. Well... <laughs> I guess he will take out his boomerang <laughs> <laughs> and throw it at the thing. Boomerang the dragon. Every See other th range. I mean, it says sixty. Oh damn! Okay, I thought boomerang what? was thirty. I didn't know you could just send that thing. <laughs> Comes with a powerful arm. Oh know? my goodness, that's a well-made boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> on a wait, why does it say only on a miss a boomerang returns? Yeah, what it happens doesn't return it unless it misses. If it if, hits if something, it, hits it stops. Something, it just falls. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's as effective as a real boomerang. <laughs> All right, it's good for like rodents. That's the thirteen hit. <laughs> it does not. And it's back. It That's my turn. It's <laughs> 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 uh, Doesn't it tell us disadvantage because he's like blinded? Yes, also that. Yeah, even better. <laughs> so he just like Hail Mary's a boomerang and he catches it a few seconds later. <laughs> you could have moved out and then back in. It's, it's fine. Fair enough. I clearly it didn't matter. But the boomer boomerang is pretty funny, sorry. <laughs> Ah, uh, oh, Dvamia. Dvamia has been hit. Uh, she and Tekka not doing super well after that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what she what she has. Uh, nothing here, nothing here. Uh, nothing helpful here. No cantrips. Okay. That leaves her with her axe. Which is the thing that works best for her. Still flanking. Hold her reliable. <laughs> she misses on her flanking attack. No! <laughs> Not on the second one. Oh, pff, but barely. <laughs> it was a minimum roll she could have done to actually hit. Uh, so she brings her axe back down on this thing. Um, for a modest amount of damage, but she, like, uh, particularly Brooke, who's directly across from her, can kind of see the a little bit of panic uh, in her eyes. 
uh, as she does her best to bring this creature down, but she's starting to think whether she actually can uh, bring it down. Uh, Pip? Uh, Pip is going to uh, use his bonus action to cast a uh, hex on the drag uh, using his racial feature. Okay. Uh, and he's going to debuff the dragon's strength. Strength checks. Yep. Uh, and then he is going to uh, does have enough range? Uh, it does. Uh, and then he is going to use his action to launch one of these stones. Okay. Choo. Show squeak how it's done. Aya. A 13 is not enough. More <laughs> pip. <laughs> Just throwing pebble after pebble. Uh, <laughs> oh. and, uh, yeah, I actually think that's that's fine. He's not going to move. Okay. Uh, at the end of Pip's turn for uh, its legendary action, uh, Cloud Fallen is going to over the birds. This does Ugh. not provoke an opportunity attack from anyone. Ooh. Oh no. Uh, uh -oh. As it gets over here, uh, sort of like looks back. It still seems to be fully relaxed despite the trail of dust that it's leaving behind uh, as it uh, uh, jumps over the birds. Uh, over here. Okay. Uh, Shield Vulture of the father variety. Uh, the dad just got beat pretty bad. Uh, question. In this big room, we don't happen to see anything egg adjacent, do we? <laughs> um, anyone who would like to get a feel for that on their turn can spend their action to make a perception check. For the burbs, it makes yeah. sense that they'd try to maybe focus on that. Do what? Uh, it, it would make sense right now for the yeah. uh, father The dad bird. is going to do that. He is okay. looking for eggs because uh, he has very thoroughly lost this this game of chicken. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's do a perception the number for the of bird. flightless chickens in this room is above average. <laughs> Squeak must feel really good right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, perception, 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 plus three. This bird is as perceptive as Pontifex. Nailed it. Nineteen. Ah, uh, from its current position, uh, the bird is not spotting its own eggs, but it does spot some egg shells right here in this flower bed. Uh, the broken remains of an egg that do not match the ones that uh, its companion has laid. Hmm. It is going to, to head that way anyways. Uh, in a to there. All right, Tekka. As Tekka is losing blood from this giant dragon's bite, he wraps a bandage around the largest tooth mark before clutching onto the ring of warmth that he's holding and closing his eyes. Activating wholeness of body, but gaining 18 health. That's helpful. 18? 18. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
the yeah. sheer willpower. Uh huh, and making sure, yeah, that ring of warmth doesn't, <laughs> by losing all that blood, doesn't become cold, which is very useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh -huh. then you, for the most part, you 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 stop the the flow of blood. And then Tekka runs forward, core staff in hand. Not able to do do much, but is now prepared for whatever the dragon will next prepare. And I will activate patient defense to take a dodge action. Okay. Uh, while Tekka is on light on his feet, ready to dodge whatever blow might come his way, Brooke, what are you do what do you do? Hmm. I'll run after the dragon. Oh god. <laughs> 10 20 25 Does it seem like it has any interest in fighting us? Um or is it just going to like is it is it standing there looking at us ready to fight and just in a better position or just like he would Keep walking that way. It seems... I'll give you a little insight check on this one. Okay. I can... Twenty-two. Let's see. Um... Besides the unnatural calm of this dragon, uh, besides the fact that it doesn't seem to react much to its wounds, which are uh, deep and certainly are starting to uh, uh, to, to, to build up, uh, it seems absolutely unconcerned with the danger that the rest of you pose and it feels like it's toying with you it's not trying to escape it's just getting in a better position to keep playing with you oh, okay well and with toy then, i mean yeah, you're gonna get eaten okay well i will take my two swings at him what does the bless mean do i still have it uh oh, it's been more than a minute no it's gone yeah, yeah it's gone okay First attack. 19. 19. So, 9 slashing and 7 radiant. So, 14 plus 9. Mm hmm. Have to start whipping at the calculator soon. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right. And then the second one. Sixteen hits. Woo! Thank God. That's uh, six radiant and. Then slashing, so 12 radiant. 12 radiant <coughs> and the 10 slashing. Okay. Uh, with two solid blows that shouldn't been should have been deadly for most creatures and people. Uh, even as you see uh, the, the dragon recoil a little bit just from the strength of your blows and even from the light coming from your weapon, it again it's as if it feels no actual pain, uh, but it does do something that almost feels like a a weak growl, and you feel like you have the dragon's full attention. Oh god. Alright, that's my turn. Okay, before we move on to the second shield vulture, uh, the dragon is going to claw at you, Brooke. Can I... Use, uh, yeah, and... what is it called? Your blood melodic, then? Curse of the Eyeless. So I use my reaction to roll 1d6 and subtract that 
from the creature's attack roll. I'm not amplifying it, since I'm just hoping it will only hit me once, so I'm not taking mm -hmm. any damage. Okay, so minus 1d6 to whatever I roll. Mm -hmm. uh, roll a d6. Yes. Nice. Oh, my God. It takes us. <laughs> okay. All right. That means it is a 14 to hit. No. Um, blinded by the light of your weapon, uh, as the dragon is lifting up to, to lower an enormous uh, clawed uh, hand upon you, you just hold up your weapon and you don't even deflect the blow. Uh, you just make it too hard to tell where you're even standing. Uh, and the dragon comes nowhere close to hitting you. Ooh. Okay. Matt, the shield vulture. The mom. Yeah, mom vulture doesn't give a shit. Uh, she's gonna go straight <laughs> straight at him. Uh, actually, uh, they're pretty quick. Yeah, they are. Uh, 5, 10, 15. Or 5, 10. Yeah. 20, 30, 35, 40. I counted incorrectly. Uh, great. Then it is going to move. There. Perfect. It's 40. Uh, okay. I feel like Dad Vulture communicated something about eggshells or something before, so she's wanting to prevent the dragon from going more that direction, uh, and then is also going to body check him. <laughs> okay. It's a... Oops. I dropped my diet. Ah. Oh. Oh, it's so close to a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strength to save, yeah? Uh, only if it hits. Okay. Um. Oh, 11 does not hit. Yeah. So, no. Yeah, in a rush to, go in, to come and interpose herself between the dragon and the flower bed, um, she ends up uh, missing with her attack entirely. Yep. That is the mama. Okay. As for the dragon. Friendship. Five feet of movement that will provoke an opportunity attack from Tekka. Let's go. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, let's see here. Uh-oh. 24 hits. Excellent. That is eight damage. Okay, eight damage. Wow. Okay. This provokes an opportunity attack from Brooke. I don't have my reaction anymore. Oh, that's right. Yeah, from well, Maledict. This is from Pontifex, then. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would not be flanking with the bird whenever that happened, right? Uh, no, no, I'd say okay. that counts. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. You're gonna need it. <laughs> That's. Oh yeah, I only have a plus. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah. Oh no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is not sufficient. And let's see if I've done this properly. It's been a little bit since I've done. No, Colin's coming. Yep. Are we all dead? Let's see. Um. I mean, Tekka just got healthy. Uh, They're three, pretty healthy. Four. Dad bird's probably dead. Mm. There we go. Oh, Ooh, oh that's Calyx. cool. Just barely oh, out of the God. way. And so he's cool squeaked. template feature. I love that. 
Yeah. I haven't seen that before. That's excellent. Uh -huh. They are over here if you ever need them for your own uh, um, area of effect. There's a bag. Uh, like, where. Yeah. Oh. That's super um. useful. Okay. Okay. So that means that Brook, both birds, and Tekka have to roll a constitution saving throw. Mm. Okay. For Tekka, it's a failure. For Brook, it's a success. That's... The birds, too, you said, right? Yes. What is that? Five I accidentally five? clicked twice. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, that's fine. I was just... Unsure. Six is a failure, and uh, five is a failure. So everyone but the uh, Brook fails. Uh, um. Yeah. Um. Were you about to say something, Matt? Yeah, my dice roller is not working. No, it's my my computer is lagging a lot right now. I apologize. Uh, what is it, twenty? Nope. Nothing? <laughs> Extra roll? Uh, yeah, yeah, Brooke accidentally rolled twice. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Brooke, this time you see what you felt earlier uh, when you had your back turned on the dragon. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really just your strong, uh, furbolg body uh, that that kind of puts up a resistance against this. It's, there isn't really any avoiding it. This cloud of death that just expands outward from the throat of this mostly dead dragon and envelops you and your bird companions and Tekka. Uh, everyone who has failed will take uh, this plus this plus that. Uh, uh, 14... Necrotic damage and Brook takes half and then half. So Brook takes three. One from succeeding and one from resisting it. Okay. Because I clicked the button too many times because it was lagging. That natural 20 out of nowhere was just a random dice roll. <laughs> Feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been you, Dad. Could have saved your life, but Dad is dead. <laughs> oh, oh, that is dead. Dad only had eight. For everyone else, it's just a little weak, sad screech, but Pip to Pip, Pip understands. Uh, <laughs> as the shield vulture uh, tells the other one to save the rags. Uh, let me get rid of this. I don't don't need it anymore. For uh, some reason, I'm hearing the vulture's voices. This romantic couple in like a very like <laughs> Spaniard type of. My love, <laughs> save the eggs. <laughs> Do not focus on my death. <laughs> save the Move eggs, on. my love. Squawk. Squeak. <laughs> Just like Talix was barely at the edge of this cloud of necrotic energy. Uh, and like just breathed it in a little bit and it's now coughing. Uh, what would he like to do? He's gonna charge this way, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like that bird. <laughs> He's gonna <laughs> run up here. Uh, and I think this uh yeah, he's just going to sting. Wait, but no, it can't. It can only do the sting as a bonus action on Pip's turn. Uh, you know, I would stab you if I had the ability to do so. <laughs> Tell me to stab him. Uh, <laughs> and I guess he's going to use... Uh, how, does the, how does the help work? Does it have to be adjacent to the thing you're helping or adjacent to the thing you're helping against? I 
can never remember. Yeah. Uh, okay. You aid a friendly creature in attacking a creature within five feet of you. So it's... You need to be within five feet of the target of the attack, not the ally. Perfect. If I can't stab you, I'll just annoy the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna, like, I don't know, do annoying things. I'll do like the little, hello, my baby, hello, my honey dance. Uh, <laughs> to be really distracting. <laughs> don't eat the other bird. I like her. She's cool. <laughs> that would be quite distracting. What effects? <laughs> Yep, pawn effects is uh, gonna bonus action move the orb, uh, which I can't, it's locked, but it's gonna move uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Mm. I think to here is all I could do. Okay. Uh, over to this uh, square. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 5, 10, 20, 25, 30. Yep. Uh, right. So orb goes to there. Uh, and then with his action. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, it wob wobs its way. Uh, that's probably not a helpful ability. Um, he is going to. Yeah, I'm just gonna cantrip it again. Uh, I'm gonna mind sliver him again, uh, and hey. he has a minus, minus one d four on the end save. It is a vicious cycle. Okay, <laughs> three. Nail. You sure you this don't want to automatically succeed on this one? Was this the one where one? I took the 12 damage? The 12? Do yeah, wanna, I think he chooses again? to succeed. Uh, he's learning his lesson. <laughs> he feels that frog boy creeping into his brain. He's like, yes, oh, he hell he no. He hears the goat. <laughs> uh, and has, nice. has grown to fear the, the goat. And basically... <laughs> with its like with its lack of eyeballs, he just turns its head and, he, and Pontifex can feel this stare on him. Uh, you mess he... with the goat, you get the horns. <laughs> 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 uh, and the dragon is unfazed by your spell. It's two. Oh no. Uh then he is going to move. Hmm. No, he's not. He's actually going to stay there. He's just going to hunker down. Whoa. That's it. Hey. Um. Hmm. Before we move on to Talix. One, two, three, four. The dragon is going to attempt to claw at Squeak. Float like a butterfly. Thing like a devilish bee. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 16 to hit. Uh, yes. To the beach he goes. For a whole six slashing damage. Never mind. Oh, and uh, is this. Uh, it's not magical. It is not. Aha! Uh -huh. You mean three. What is huh. that all you got? <laughs> a devilishly handsome bee, I might say. Okay. <laughs> now it's Talix's turn. Hmm. Which is... Mm. It is. Yeah. So 60 feet? Probably, right? Yeah. He will take out his boomerang. Do you want to step out of the blind zone? Oh. <laughs> the blind zone. Mm -hmm. Am I still blinded? Nope. No, okay. it's just adjacent. Hit him with a okay. rang. Rang him. <laughs> um, I'm ranging. Uh, you have a uh, you have advantage because of squeak. Let's go. Hey. Get him with the ring. Boomerang. 22 oh, hits. Yes. Advantage. Alright. Oh, the advantage blow. Beautiful. 
Remember this moment when Talix was the first one of our party to take one a dragon. And the boomerang boomerang. falls. If this right kills back. the dragon, Four. this is the de facto the beta the grass section ever. The greatest <laughs> session of all time. <laughs> I I I am sorry. <laughs> this is de facto the worst session of all time. <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't kill the dragon and I lost my boomerang. Oh, come on. And <laughs> and fair, everyone, just lost his boomerang. The, everyone just hears the thunk. As... <laughs> 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 yeah, baby. <laughs> oh. The dragon looked like it didn't big even tea. feel it. Oh, wait, we got two big teeth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's his turn. All right, is he moving back into the light? Uh, yeah. Good call, good call. All right. Mm. Uh. <laughs> to, uh, I guess not. Uh, at the end of Talix's turn. Uh, the dragon is going to move. Uh, it is big enough that it can move through Squeak's space um, just fine. Um, but it would be like difficult terrain. I think that still counts. So it will be 30 feet this way. Um, which does not provoke opportuni an opportunity. Blah! An opportunity attack from either of them. Uh, now it's Devamia's turn. Um, oh, uh, actually, sorry. I didn't know I could do this. Um, Pip has, oh. when the familiar takes damage, you can use your reaction to grant it resistance. Could I have done that on the hit? Uh, does it already not have resistance? Uh, oh, you're right, you're right. No, it doesn't stack. Never mind. You're good. Okay. Good catch. Uh... I appear to have accidentally closed the Devamia stat block. One second, I need to go fish it up. I don't know when it went away. Okay, how many do we have? This many, cool. Hmm. Alright. The mummy will cast Cure Wounds on the bird. <gasps> um, and uh, for her, her, uh, her magic is sort of um, uh, it's it's green colored and it's it's very non non um, it's not flashy, it's not really pretty. Uh, it's quick and it's practical. Um, she basically uh, bandages up the uh, shield vulture's wound. Uh, three for uh, for five whole points uh, of healing. Um, as and and as she says, and this is something that the birds and Pip can understand uh, as she speaks in in animal uh, tongue. And uh, she simply says, uh, "You stay out of this fight. We 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 got this." Uh, looks Is up the at bird the dragon. back alive? Yes. How much Not healing? Five. Five. It squawks approvingly. <laughs> Pip. It you son of a bitch! Time. I like that bird. Oh, he's back. We're cool. Good time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> never mind. No harm, no foul. Uh, Pip is going to. I believe he has one rock left. Uh, yeah, because he 
Uh, he has one rock left, so he's going to. Final rock. Oops. His egg is screws behind here. One here. Yeah. One here. Oh. There we go. Look like it froze. Uh, okay. Five, ten. Uh, yeah, that's way within sixty. Uh, then he is going to try to bean Cloud Fallen with the stone. <laughs> Throw, throw, the throw the rock. At 20 hits. Uh, okay, and hex. So this much. Eleven, got it. Uh, Beans him for eleven. It, it took him a couple of tries, uh, but this time, <laughs> at the at the longest possible throw so far, uh, he actually nails it, and the rock goes, Doo! and it's more effective than Talix's boomerang, but um, and then he just rolls off. Got it. Uh, and then he's gonna bonus action make three more. <laughs> okay. Uh, as we prepare some more ammunition. Uh, Father Bird is, well, he's prone, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Father Bird will uh, stand up. And then... Uh, why can't I... Uh, to there, and then he will dead. He's he's looking at those. Or I guess he's trying to get, he's trying to go towards the eggshells. I'm assuming they're in the middle of this. Yeah. Okay. They're scattered in this area, and uh, from up here, the um, the shield vulture will be able to see that these eggshells are this uh, um, black color, um, but it's a beautiful kind of black. It's sort of glistening and gem-like. Uh, it's like there's multiple fragments of gemstone that are scattered around, but there's like one large chunk is clearly like half of an egg. Uh, mm -hmm. The others are smaller pieces, but like visibly this used to be an egg. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's going to uh, to make some sad crowing it's... noises, and that's it. Uh, but again, it is not its egg. Ataka. Uh, uh, yeah, let's keep chasing after this dangerous dragon, huh? I don't see anything dangerous about that. Uh, let's see. I will get here. Just so you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you two let's... plotting? <laughs> and let's start slamming with that core stab yet again. A 15 hits. Excellent. Ooh. First strike. Four damage. Nailed it. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> And then we continue with the nonsense. Let's go. It's a flurry of blows. Ooh, Which I love that nonsense. your second attack, right? Uh, after this, yes. After oh, okay. This. I see. We are not done yet. I see. First, unarmed attack. We're open handing. That is a hit. That is a hit. Um. There's one other thing. Um, okay, so it should do a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Close that, close that. Uh, 23. Okay, nothing happens. <laughs> we continue on. Then we do damage for the first attack. That is five damage. Extra five. 
And then it's the second punch. That also hits. hits. That's another dexterity saving throw. Oh. Uh, that is a nine. Okay. It will choose it... to succeed. Okay. Good work. Uh, and then, yeah, that is uh, nine more damage. And then we do the actual second attack. Let's go. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's a final shame. one is a miss. Yeah, I and don't you... think there's more to be done. So you dance around that's... the dragon, one, two, three. The the fourth strike is where you lose your balance a little bit, and you feel like the the, the blood loss from earlier is sort of catching up to you. Uh, but your other blows up until that point, they are uh, they're all accurate, and they're all um, your your staff and your hands are kind of. Uh, it's like this dragon is now enveloped in its own dust. Ah, it's getting actually kind of hard to breathe around it. Uh, uh, could I do one last thing? or is Yes. It okay. It can make a constitution saving throw. Oh. Um, I have a 17. Okay, nothing happens. End of turn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so curious. I don't know what never it was. Know. Ah, Brook. <laughs> Where will I be flanking with Tekka? Only here or here? Either of those spots. Cool. So and the bird, uh, some plot effects is able I to think, get from this single, I think too. This counts, too, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay, then I'll definitely make it. I'm pretty sure you can do it from all these. Five, so, uh, should be the rules. 15. 25, 30. Ta -da -da. Nice. Brooke, cool. this, uh, you figure that this will make one hell of a story next time you're with a Phantoms. <laughs> the dragon you just slayer. walk up to this undead dragon. All right. And I hit it, or at least try. Twenty-seven hits. Okay. It takes those. That's seven radiance, so fourteen and twelve slashing. Okay. And then um, the second. There is no need to roll a second attack. You can just tell me how you would like to kill this dragon. Nice. I would try to cut the head off, just so it can't spy any more of its deadly breaths. Okay. Um, the dragon's attention was on Tekka for the last few seconds. Uh, but then he hearing you approaching and seeing its own shadow growing longer uh, as you come forward with your glowing weapon, uh, you go for the deadly blow. It turns around and using its own motion against him, head goes flying. More dust pours out until there is no more movement and the dragon's body just heavily hits the ground. There is stillness in the cave of dust. Except for the part where I dropped stuff under my desk. But <laughs> That's the sound of the dragon's head falling <laughs> to the ground. The immersion. Yes, I'm providing sound effects now. <laughs> Are we safe? I just smack my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon's head falls to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Can everyone look around and see that there's nothing else? Waiting here for us, please. The only sound for the next few seconds is your heavy breath uh, and the tapping of the feet of the vultures <clears throat> who uh, turn around and look around like the rest of you do. And the only movement is your own. I think... 
that hmm, I think Telix would go over to Pip, seeing that he's pretty heavily wounded. Well, and actually, we can probably rest, so never mind. He doesn't do that. Scrap that. <laughs> No, I'm fine. <coughs> I'm just, it's, I have more blood. I can just make more. It's fine. Uh, so we will do what Talix decided not to. <laughs> oh. I'm glad someone here is capable of healing people. Talix, I really didn't expect that from you. <laughs> oh my god. See, Telex woke up today and then chose violence. <laughs> he uses the boomerang instead of uh, helping the child. I rolled Telex a is... 10 <coughs> on Pip's healing. Uh, as, uh, as the orc approaches and, and just says, oh, let, let me look at your wounds. Uh, but I'll make it quick because I also want to go take a look at that dragon. And she'll just like bandage up Pip a little bit and then immediately be off. I think Pontifex was walking over to pick up the boomerang with the intention of returning it to Talix, and then he hears Devamia mention the dragon. He's like, oh yeah, and he just ignores Talix <laughs> entirely. <laughs> ignores the boomerang. Talix for the dragon. The boomerang. <laughs> Talix has to do his own little walk of shame to pick it up. The wub wub greets him wub, before wub, disappearing. Wub. Talix has it's only sadly. one spell slot left. Yeah, Pontifex still has one. Yeah. I had plans for it, but then you just killed it, and it's like, well, great. I was waiting for a single turn where uh, the professor would be within running distance to Brooke, and Brooke would be next to the dragon, so that I could, uh, I could make you attack it as a reaction thing, and also give you a big buff. Because clearly that wub wub orb wasn't ever going to catch up to this dragon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, that's for good. They said, just let Brooke do all this stuff with the magic sword, but it works. Okay. It's a little crowded on this side. Some of you <laughs> gather around this dragon. Uh, it, in the state it's in, it almost feels like it's been dead for weeks, months even. Uh, part of its flesh is uh, has straight up decayed. Uh, scales are peeling off of its figure. Um, the head has fallen like on the like on this spot. Um, and it is full of the wounds we have inflicted, but none of them are actually bleeding. It, there's just dust. Um that at this point no longer actively pours out of those of those wounds. Um, sort of like reminding you of that one time when you slain the, the white wolf. Uh, there's gemstones growing out of the body of this creature. Uh, this one's black like onyx. Hmm. Can Pontifex make some kind of check or something to try to figure <laughs> out what kind of dragon this was pre-death? Like, is this a Ladarian dragon? Oh, well, you don't need a check for that. It definitely is. Okay. The the gemstone thing okay. is like their uniqueness. Oh, okay. The this is the gemstone thing. It's just a black gemstone. I see. Uh, then Pontifex is gonna want to take some of these i guess just like you know a nice like fist sized one or something okay, yeah, okay. they'll a need nice to be sort of like gemstone. pried out carved out you're trying to take the to take the gems uh yeah uh, he's just he's just wanting one if people want to do the stuff with the rest i'm sure but he's he's definitely okay. wanting one of these gems all right yeah pontifex see um after just a very brief examination you uh you reach down you have like a dagger or some kind of other uh tool i have i do have a small knife okay if that'll 
Does a 22 hit you? Uh, is this is this an attack roll? Yeah. Uh, if something bursts out of it, then I'll use shield, and then no. Okay. Uh, there is a sudden movement, and you instinctively um, you grab your staff, and a and a sh- uh, a magical force field appears before you, and it stops the dragon's claws from grabbing you. Uh, as the body, the headless body, um, comes back to life. Kidding me? Oh, shit. Let me edit my thing. I, I do just have a wrote. quick question for you, Winter. Uh, hey, yeah, what's up? Th- this staff that Pontifex won from this uh, this wizard tournament thing, can you describe it again? Ooh, uh, is that too far back in your notes? Because uh, <laughs> that's where the shield is being generated from, so. Hmm. I don't have a description written. I would I would have to go back through the okay, mods and see what I said. No, if it's like a if it's a big pain, never mind. Don't worry about it. Be ready for next time. Ah, uh, but we're back in initiative. What the heck? Do I still get my second strike? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Let's go! Let's resume exactly where we left off. I'll take it. I'm still thinking. Kip is the master mind tactician who stayed where he was. <laughs> I don't trust it. <laughs> still flank. Ah! Oh! <laughs> it misses! Oh, wow. Very is taken it, by surprise. Oh, yeah. no, you already have advantage. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, that was my second attack. Brooke, you had basically, like, you had, you were right in the process of, of uh, sheathing your weapon again, and so like in in the awkward uh, rush to pull it back out, your swing just goes way too wide. In that panic of, oh no, I still need the right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Motherbird. Oh, Mama Bird. Uh- can she make a uh, a perception check to look for her eggs? Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. Sorry, I closed all the bird stats. You done bamboozled me. <laughs> um, plus. Mama bird. Okay. Uh, she too cannot spot her own eggs. She has been frantically looking around ever since the dragon was uh, has been uh, behead- beheaded. Um, okay, well they are pretty injured no uh, from this thing, so I don't know if their willingness to help us is going to trump survival instincts and looking for the egg, so I think she's then going to start heading off. Okay. It's a dragon's turn. It can't make bite attacks anymore. Well, I believe Pontifex is within range. <laughs> of the head? Yeah. Uh, oh. So it will be a bite attack at Pontifex. We'll see what's shield up. Is the head prone? I. And. <laughs> Is the head prone? <laughs> Let's say it is. Disadvantage! <laughs> uh, it will be a bite at Pontifex and a claw. Um, okay. At, 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 at Brooke. Does it count as one creature? Yeah. Or is it two? Okay, sure. I'll use <laughs> yeah, my. Yeah, two places at once. Okay, I'll use my second blood maledict and we'll amplify it this time. 
So this time it's like for all the attacks in his turn. Oh. 1d6. But first a... damage to myself. Oh wait, is the dragon itself prone? Um, it, the dragon itself stands up on its turn. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll take two damage. Okay. And that doesn't have a save, right? I just have disadvantage on all my attacks. Uh, no, it's I... a minus number yes. on the attacks. Oh, 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 that's right. I roll oh. for each attack. So if it's like a attack where okay. you make us have a saving throw, then it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, so roll it now for Pontifex's bite. I, uh, the okay. two is the damage that Brook took, I, th I think. Mm hmm Okay. Roll it for Pontifex, and Pontifex, the bite is at disadvantage, so it's a 16 Ooh. to hit. Uh, oh, my is minus it's five, so. to 11. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, my 25 is enough. Okay. Uh, the claw at Brook, uh, which is not disadvantage, so it's a 24 minus Ooh. 6, 18. Nope. Nice. He misses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah blood melody. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> the blood is so good in this combat. Is your AC like 19? Yeah, it is. Oh, you needed exactly what? the six. That's so good. <laughs> really clutch. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it's surrounded. And without its special movement, it can't really move away from this. Uh, squeak! Something is happening behind him. <laughs> no, no, not again. You won't get me this time. Uh, and I think Squeak <laughs> is going to uh, charge at this individual at full sand and try to shove it prone. What? <laughs> yeah, is it still hexed? Yes. Yeah, Squeak is going to try to knock it prone. There is no size limit to that? Uh, I think it is. Oh, because he's he's not a he's not. A, I think there is size limits on shove. I think it's one size. Uh, okay, yeah. So if no, it's can't. if it's a normal <laughs> shove, then yeah. Shit. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna try to do that. Uh, I guess he's gonna ready. He, no let, me, let, me, larger. let me make sure how the chain master thing uh, is. It a. This bonus action, you command the familiar to take the attack action. Is that as a reaction? I don't think so. As a bonus action, you command the familiar to take the attack action. Okay, no, so it's not a reaction. Uh, so yeah, then uh, Squeak is going to uh, ready the help action. All right. Pontifex. Uh, as you force feel the shimmers out of existence. <laughs> yeah, uh, Pontifex is going to... Uh, Brook, do it again! Uh, he's, he's gonna. Ah, the time has over. come! Uh, and Pontifex is. Uh, I have a second little spell, so let me see what this does. Um, oh no, I can just do it for. Oh, that'd be really cool, but that's really stupid. If no, he actually good. doesn't have to. So he's going to sit there. Hey, uh, Brooke, do it again. Uh, and also feel better. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to bonus action <laughs> healing word. On Brooke. <laughs> so I'll, I'll heal Brooke and also you get to make an attack as a real. Oh, wait, no, no, no. You did the, the ma blood malady. Oh, yeah, I did. I yeah. lied. Tekka, feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, you're fine. You don't make me look worried. Hold on, I have a better spell. <laughs> you, next me. Taka, you get second level heroin. Be dope. <laughs> I understand now where Telex has his move from earlier from. Uh, no, I'm flip-flopping too much. He's going to heal me. Okay? So I'll heal you and you can make an attack as a reaction. Okay, great. There's, there's a okay. lot of emotions. There's a lot of things going on right now. I had tried to eat me. <laughs> That's not gonna do anything. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, but you're flanking. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, we'll try again. We'll try again. You got the Tekka! I say from the other side. Okay, That's the 21. 15, 21 hits. Yeah. And also, go. you heal for six. Nice. Thank you, Podfax. <laughs> sure, let's kill it. <laughs> Nine. 
Okay. Damage. Deca, how would you like to kill this dragon? <laughs> Let's go! Um... God. I... How do you kill a dragon with a quarter staff? I don't know how that the works. Dragon. <laughs> the headless dragon, nonetheless. He bumped yep. the head. <laughs> Just <laughs> leap fun. across Pontifex yeah. onto the head of the other side. <laughs> um, no, what I think it looks like, I think this is like Tekka crushing it one of its hind legs. It's forced to like. Yeah, stumble and lay down, and it just becomes lifeless. Wow, the ultimate just stomping on someone's toes. Yes. Oh, um, stub his and you're, toe. And you're using like the power of the spring that's been installed yes. in your in your staff to do like an extra amount of uh, of power on with that blow. Extra stub. <laughs> extra stub. And. The dragon falls once again in this cloud of dust that is lifted up all around and then begins to settle. Tekka's not going to stop attacking. Haha! <laughs> He's just Tekka... going to keep bashing its body. Yeah, Tekka's going to crush all its claws. Okay? Yep. Alright, so... Um... Uh, and Pip is going to, like, has create bonfire on this thing's <laughs> You're not gonna get me twice. And bash, bash, <laughs> bash, set it on fire. It on fire. There, it, it's such a dry body that if fire really doesn't take hold, but it's burning beneath it. Um, and yeah, Tekka, you're just smacking this thing over and over and over, and it's becoming more and more clear as you guys are working on this that the more you're destroying the body, and the more the dust sort of like keeps, it's as if a gentle wind is blowing it back together. And with each claw, the Tekka breaks. A new one slowly grows. And every time, uh, Brook, you drive your sword through the dragon's skull, the two halves always seem to be finding each other again. We, as long as you guys keep attacking it, it will not be able to stand back up. But it's clear that everything you're doing to it, it's all temporary. Question? Yes? What happens if I slice her the head and kick one side to the other? Like, kick one part of the head to the one side and the other part of the head to the other? Does you're just like two heads? You're, you're, you're throwing one on one side of the cave and you're dragging yeah. the other one away. And you're looking back and Tekka is seeing like a new head regrowing attached to the rest of the body. Oh, god damn it. Uh, the, is there like a, like these black gems and stuff, is there like a main one, like a forehead gem or something? Um, this kind of dragon has uh, uh, gems across its, like the spine. Uh, down mm -hmm. its uh, neck uh, and down the, the its back and all the way down to its tail. And, and it has one that is on its snout, sort of like a rhino's horn. Oh. Uh, so if you were to like, find like this... one that feels like it's the most special, that would be the one. Yeah, I think Pontifex is going to go for the nose horn one. Uh, and he's not going to be gentle with the knife this time. He's literally just going to try to smash this thing off with this mm. magic staff. Okay, yeah. You break it off, uh, and uh, what you end up holding, it's this, uh, it's it's big. Like, it takes up almost your entire hand to hold this gemstone, and uh, while it, it's not, uh, like, perfectly symmetrical, so, like, it wouldn't have a lot of value in the way it's currently mm -hmm. cut, it is beautiful, and it looks almost polished. Uh, and a new gemstone does not grow back, but the rest of, it, of its body parts are still attempting to return. Can Tekka gather as many loose parts of one of its hind legs into his iron pot? Like, try to separate it from the main body. Yeah, you can. Okay. But as, as with Brook's attempt so to separate back, yeah. the head away, it, they eventually, it eventually just grows new ones. Yeah. And everything you have <clears throat> gathered away, it's turning into dust. Wait, guys, the, the thing we killed before said he was earning his chains. What if we get rid of the chains? I hit the get rid of the chains. 
<laughs> I hit the chain. Um. <clears throat> well, with the chains being made of uh, <clears throat> of metal, um, it's not very easy for your sword to break them. Hmm. It sounds like I'm onto something. <laughs> well, I can keep trying unless Devamia has like an axe that's probably easier than like a big uh, sword. Um, Devamia will assist. Uh, the two of you between your axe and your sword, uh, <clears throat> you're you're holding onto one of the chains like the one that was tied around its neck. <clears throat> Are you trying to remove it from the dragon? Or just break it? Uh, I mean, would it get chains? Yeah, I was about to say, would it be easier if you just cut off the head and then take off the chains? Yeah, you can remove them. Okay. It's sort of like sort of like taking off a, a necklace from someone. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is no head in the way at this point to stop you, and they come off. Is it still regrowing? Is yes. he still squirming? Shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice try, Pip, though. Well, why, why do they care so much about these chains? Well, for now, I think, will we potentially take turns on hammering down on this so we don't exhaust all at once? Some of us should look for an exit. Right, I'll do that. This is barbaric. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> of all the body parts that you guys have uh, like separated from the rest of the dragon so far, uh, all the ones that have been permanently removed from the dragon and couldn't find their way back to it have, have turned into dust. Except for the gemstone the Pontifex is holding. That maintains its, uh, um, its shape. Um... Mm. So if you'd like, you can leave, what, uh, Brooken and Devamia on, uh, on chopping duty? Mm-hmm. Well, and Pip is going to keep the, the fire roiling on it. Okay. I, I don't know what burnt stone, uh, burnt dust would smell like, but... Uh -huh. Charcoal. Oh, and Squeak is also just like, yeah, you bitch. And just, just like, <laughs> <laughs> Squeak is kicking it. Stepping on it. Yeah, while Pip is keeping the fire going, he's just like repeatedly stabbing it with his, with his stinger. So take that, <laughs> and that, and I got another one of these. <laughs> Kill he's my starting to get friend. tired. <laughs> he's like getting winded, stabbing the stinger. <laughs> I don't have the stamina I used to. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm we should take... a sprinter, not a long distance kind of devil. We're learning so much about Squeak today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making everything canon about Austin's character. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, just given so much personality to Talix's boomerang as well. <laughs> I think the vultures are like long gone. Like they've they've probably kind of scoured this room to this to some point looking for their eggshells and if they don't find it they'll continue on to the next one uh, let me take yeah. a quick look at the shield vultures um okay yeah they, they have, have they have 13. gone around uh, in in a circle and now they're, both of them are just like over here okay uh I guess before Pontifex actually like leaves to try to find an exit, he is in the middle of these stones. Uh, anything, anything arcane going on about these stones, or anything religious going on about these stones? Um. So I will tell you what you see. Mm -hmm. Um. Each of them is glowing in a way that feels like it's Ladaria. So maybe there are magical, maybe there are non-magical, naturally glowing stones on this continent. But it would be, which would be very interesting, but like your plurna mind imagines that magic is probably involved. Um, one of them is not glowing and it's uh, 
uh, sideways. It looks like it uh, it fell over. Uh, it's a purple one. Um, actually, I think I don't need to make you roll. I think you'd feel the slight presence of magic in the area. The moment you step in between this, these these uh, crystals, you you can just feel it. Your your hair your hair is yeah you don't have any hair. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, I think like if, of all of our time neck? abroad, uh, he's starting to. Uh, he's actually starting to grow like some facial hair, like a little bit of like beard stubble <laughs> is coming in that I guess that apparently he just normally keeps like oiled. Like when humans grow old, their hair turns white, but when frogs grow old, they grow hair. Uh, yeah, and it's also <laughs> white. It's also white. Uh, but and yeah, you can just feel it like upon your skin. And it's a pleasant kind of sensation. It's... Not the kind of magic you feel threatened from. Um, actually, kind of the contrary. Wait, everyone, uh, this is a little dangerous, but it, it, maybe try to drag the corpse over here into the uh, into the circle. Uh, I'm going to try to write this thing. Uh, and Ponifex is going to try to lift this. Is it liftable or is it like huge? Um, it's pretty big, but give it an athletics check. Yeah, Pontifex's goal is to try to write this thing to see if maybe that th that'll make the magic and like seeing as how everything else around is like dead mushrooms and stuff, but in the middle there's like flower flowers. Uh, maybe this is like a life zone or something. Maybe this dragon will be dead. dead. Second would assist if possible, if you accept it. Uh, sure. Uh, maybe it's better if you just do this. Uh, and can I just guidance Tekka instead? <laughs> <laughs> I guess while Devamir keeps hitting on it, I'll start pushing it into the circle. It's actually the wrong track. Uh, yeah, Devamir can help you. Oh, I know it was the correct one. Um... Someone needs to keep hitting! <laughs> um, I got it. I got it. <laughs> uh, Devami and Brooke, yes, you drag the uh, burnt, uh, destroyed remains of the dragon uh, in the middle of the flower bed. Uh, while well, <laughs> Squeak keeps uh, stinging it like it's just a very. Um, uh, Crap! I'm so bad with words today, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's a very relentless wasp that just won't give up. <laughs> like a devilishly handsome sting. bee. Yeah. We've been over this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, Professor's gonna... Yeah, Pontifex is gonna give guidance to, to Tekka. Or is the, the lift? It's probably a lot better. Uh, Tech, you go ahead and roll an athletics check. You can add advantage and guidance from Pontifex's support. So, what is the guidance access to specific? Uh, it's a 1 plus D4. 1d4. Got it. Uh... Oh, wait. Yeah, I think I rolled wrong. Uh, is that enough still? Or should I roll again? Is that before the guidance? Uh, no, that was with the guidance, not with advantage. Well, you rolled a 19. But it says advantage in parentheses. Yeah, because I didn't choose two Yeah, because you had two dice loaded. Yeah. If you load any two dice and then click advantage, it doesn't load another d20. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. But it's a 19 Either way, plus... that's sufficient. Okay. Yeah. Um, it can only so get yeah. up to a 23. Um, Tekka, for you, it's... L um, it's less just a physical strength and more like you're using your staff to pry it up uh, and uh, help support it um, so that you have to less actual work to push it uh, into an upright <laughs> position. Let me just uh, uh, plop right, it like if this. If you just use the spring and the staff like a fulcrum and then you pry the leverage here, it should multiply the force by any <laughs> 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 The professor is giving like engineering advice 
Yeah, well, Tekka does have a, like, pulley attachment, so that would, nice. like, That's bear perfect. some... Yep. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Let's see if... Uh, I can... Uh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, oh? That's a lot of work. Uh, uh, there we go. It nailed it. <laughs> Nicely done. Ta-da. Ah, uh, yeah, you... Manage to put it back uh, into into its uh, original position, and uh, you can see a, a bit of purple light um, it emanate from the part where the two halves are put back together, uh, and then the the crack that had originally broken it in half is visibly just gone, uh, and a crystal gr glows purple now, uh, and. Uh, as this happens, there is a flash of light, and the majority of you are suddenly enveloped in it. Whoa! Holy! Oh, I oh, think it sent Oh, Squeak just got launched. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, that's so cool. Uh-oh. What would you like to do? Uh, Probably how, get out of... How does this well, feel? Yeah. Sorry, what did you that? ask? Go ahead, Dennis. Does the dragon still regenerate with that? Um, <clears throat> you keep an eye on it. You're looking at the, um, its remains and you see that they are still coming together. Then Brooke will stay and keep hitting. Yep, that between you and the and the uh, squeak, you you make sure of it. It's here, you know it. Uh, Pip's gonna try to get out of this because he doesn't like spooky magic. Mm, that's fair, but Pip cannot get out. Oh no. Just kidding. Uh. Oh? <laughs> he can go through just fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Don't play with my heart like this. Um, I think Pip like tries to call back light. Squeak. Squeak tells him to just go screw himself. He's mad at this dragon, and then Pip just makes him like poof. Yeah. Poof, and then poof. Snaps his fingers twice, and. Uh, um, an annoyed squeak is now with him. Uh, I when forget Pip you went, can do that. When Pip went through this, uh, this purplish light, uh, it felt kind of warm. It felt nice. Uh, it, it was a pleasant kind of sensation. Uh, almost felt like uh, like walking through a waterfall on a really warm day. Yeah, that felt kind of nice. Like walking through a waterfall on a really warm day. <laughs> Teacher, what is this magic? God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the goat tells you to roll an Arcana check. <laughs> All of what you can this? do it. <laughs> what is this? An Arcana check. Yeah. Why not? Do your cool. best. Can I guidance myself for this? Asking the goat. Uh, yeah. Cool. You're trying to analyze what, like, what just happened. Do I also roll for Telex? <laughs> wow. Is that oh, a double? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, one a, that's a, a, a one, one on the, the twenty and a one on the guidance. How about I use my pile up spiration on this one? <laughs> Okay. So 21 would be for Brooke. Got it. Okay, here. He's just mainly trying to understand when he can actually oh stop this. Oh, my inspiration dice rolled a two. No. Oh. Incredible. That's an 11. Uh, yoink. 
Go see my bag now. <laughs> okay, so I have a rule from Brook and one from uh, Pontifex. That's it. I don't think it would make sense for Tekka to know anything about this, so. Sure thing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Tell me, Brook. Okay. You're the expert. <laughs> with, a, with an 11 <laughs> from Pontifex. Uh, where with the crystals you weren't too sure earlier, now you're sure that there is some kind of magic involved. There's definitely <laughs> some it's magic, definitely at magic play. Um, More Brooke, information pending. You yourself <laughs> are not familiar enough with spell casting and with uh, most forms of magic uh, to really be able to identify what this is. Uh, but as you're stuck. Uh, in here just trying to constantly keep the dragon from regenerating. Uh, you do notice that the moment when this uh, light sprang into existence, uh, the chains that you have broken, they too have started to grow back. And they don't just grow from the dragon, they're growing from the ground too. You actually sort of like sidestep one. It almost felt like a snake was about to grab your ankles, but it's the chain is not going for you. It's chaining down the dragon in the position it's currently in. Okay, I think this is good. Something is happening with the chains. And the dragons. Look at that. I sell while hammering on the dragon. <laughs> Look at it. Wham! The chains are going. Wham! Back from the ground. Wham! <laughs> Do you know, maybe it is better if we just leave. A part so? of me dies on the inside saying that, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't know more about this. Well, the chains... Did you say they're getting bigger? They're... They're regrowing the bits that you broke off. And huh. uh, they are longer. Yeah, they're longer in the sense that they are, like, fully enveloping the body of the dragon. At least the bits that you're not in the process of cutting down. Well, um, the dragon is clearly earning its chains with this. So, uh, do I stop or do I not stop? I think we should maybe just leave. What Can we're we? doing isn't working. Alright. Broke stops and goes... Out of the circle. Okay. Um, the professor's gonna start heading out. Vamia cautiously backs away as well. Pass through the light and uh, it's a weird but pleasant sensation. I'd like to keep an eye on the dragon while yeah. leaving with like the others. You're going around a circle of light and you look, you're you looking back and you can see the dragon's <laughs> new head uh, raising up a little bit. It's still missing part of a couple of its legs, but it's sort of like raising itself up onto one side and looking in your direction. You can see that the chains, um, the, the way they have reformed, they're actually holding the dragon down in a way that doesn't allow it to move and chase after you. And so with its empty eye sockets, it's just watching you leave. Hmm. Good call. Okay, this is some sort of positive outcome. It's some sort of binding ritual. But I wonder why. Well... Probably to keep the drag. Down. Pip said the creatures before spoke of earning their chains. I wonder if they were earning from this beast, or if this beast is also one who earned them. And that makes me wonder if this circle was for something bigger before. Seems excessive for such a small beast. The more you say, the more I want to get out. 
All right, you know, maybe we should, as I said, maybe we just find these eggs and uh, vermouth, but uh, there is the chance there is something bigger. Okay, you're approaching this side of the cave? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I assume the vultures are long gone while we were yeah, no, bludgeoning uh, the body They've of been thing. staying here and they've been squawking mm. uh, a little bit. Um, and approaching that part of the cave, you can see that it, it continues forward, and you can see it's sort of like curve um, about 20 feet away from you. Uh, so it takes sort of like a sharp turn. Uh, but you can't get to it as there are metal bars in the way. Uh, and a strange contraption on one side of the wall, on, um, sorry, on two sides of the wall one side of the bars where you are and the other side of the bars that seems to be a, a mechanism of some kind hmm. can i look for anything like any mar identifying symbols on it like a language Color yes, markers, absolutely. anything trying to get rid of it. Make it an investigation check. There. My special. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Rolled an eight, got a twenty. <laughs> um the markings on these various uh, um, the sort of like cog-shaped uh, uh, things that can be turned. Uh, you touch one and it, uh, it can go left or right. Uh, and there are symbols on them that, that seem like perhaps letters or perhaps numbers. You don't you can't read them. It's not uh, a, a font that you, that you recognize. Um, probably some kind of Ladarian language that uh, uh, None of you present can even understand, uh, but the the location um, and the number and the position of each of these little cogs kind of makes you think. It makes you think of a of a combination lock, the kind that you would have on like a safe or on some other such things. And it seems to you like the it, it is definitely connected to the metal bars. So by uh, Putting in the correct combination, these could eventually be open. If I turn the little cog, how many numbers seems to be in each slot? Uh, there is a total of 10 positions for each of them. Mm. Hmm. Well... By my calculations, there's approximately 10,000 possible answers. Uh, there's only like three cogs. Ah. Oh. So it's more like a thousand. Uh, by my calculation, there's <laughs> about 504. <laughs> <laughs> so are we just going to try it out? No, never mind. Wrong. It's a thousand. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, like, look, when it comes to puzzles, I will sit here and I will try this a thousand times, but uh, it'll take a long time. Any guesses? Hmm. Does it seem to, like, bar the way forward, or is this, like, an aside thing? Uh, this seems to be the only way. Hmm. No, maybe it's something ridiculous, like how many mushrooms were there? <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Counting the mushrooms? <laughs> well, I don't know, perhaps a five? Oh. A five, five, five. Pull. <laughs> <laughs> You don't even know which symbol is a five. The fifth one. Well, <laughs> from what? Starting where? From the first one. <laughs> which one? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, you turn the cogs so they're all on the same symbol. <laughs> yep. Hopefully they're all fives. And uh, also and change there... the first one to five ticks up. <laughs> and, and, and there is yep. like a, a lever on one side and yeah. Ah, you figure that's that's what you have to pull every time you have like the right combination down. Ah, uh, but it, it doesn't work. What kind of symbols are? Ah, uh, they are impossible to read for any of you. Oh, like okay. you don't, you don't, you don't know what they mean. I mean, um. We have no other choice but guessing, right? Actually, uh, uh, Devamia can Ladarium? tell you. Yeah, oh. actually, Devamia can tell you. Um, which, they are in the numbers um, 0 through 9. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, she, like, spotting these symbols, she gasps a little bit. Uh, and she, she says, uh, it's, it's the language of the dragon people. Like Ladarian Draconic. Uh, sure. Yes. Yes. In fact, well, it looks nothing accurate. like the Draconic. It, it really doesn't, does it? I have no idea what Draconic looks like. <laughs> ah, I should learn it. Maybe Murder Claw would enjoy it. I don't think Murder Claw. I speaks. could teach you. Okay. Well, not now. Perhaps after we get out of here. If you insist. So, so by my calculations, we have seen one dragon in here. Put it on one. <laughs> one, one, one. Perfect. No, it hasn't been 111 dragons. One dragon. <laughs> zero, zero, Hold one. Hold on, let me, oh, zero, let me get zero, out one. my bag of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't work, try uh, zero, zero, two. <laughs> you know what? You just go up. You'll figure it out. I think he will rest against a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> you start from zero zero one, <clears throat> well, and you go up. Oh. Number one doesn't work, and number two doesn't work. And you just sit down, and uh, get to work. <clears throat> uh, the rest of you, you all take a short rest. As Pontifex begins to just, uh, it's if we try like, one combination every ten seconds, it takes a little under three hours to try all possible combinations. Mm. I don't know. I think like the professor absolutely has the mental fortitude to sit there and turn a dial and pull a lever. Yeah, every and you, 10 seconds you have three hours, but maybe uh, not Devamia. <laughs> Devamia helps you like at first. She'll pull the lever every time you have you have turned the the, the knob. <laughs> Um, but like after a little bit, she'll she'll get like she she tries to get someone else to do it, and 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 Talix would perhaps offer, and like the moment when <clears throat> she leaves her spot, uh, and Talix takes over. The first time Talix pulled pulls down the lever on the number two hundred and twenty seven, the bar is lower. See if you had just stuck in there a bit longer, you would have seized the glory. <laughs> So do we get a short rest? Yes. Woo! Black Metal Dick is back! Oh, Pip got a short rest, you say? Mm-hmm. I am back at full power. Uh, within minutes of you guys having started to do this, the dragon was pretty much back in the uh, terrible shape that it was in when you first met it. Uh, it's not healing. It's just back to its uh, um, partially decayed form. Uh, but at least it has all its limbs back and the head is back. And it hasn't uh, moved one inch closer to you. Uh, and instead it sort of like made himself comfortable on the bed of flowers. Um, and just silently watched you. Well, uh, Freda must be worried sick by now, but surely if he sticks us outside or if he loops back around, uh, it should all work out just fine. What an adventure, huh? 
And we didn't even find the eggs. All of these for some egg. Well, we didn't even find them. Maybe they'll be right around that corner. A little uh, bit of optimism. You... Hmm? That, will, that doesn't hurt anyone. Can you click the short rest button on Pip's DD Beyond? Oh, yes, I can. And I can and, do it for uh, Talix. And too. adjust his HP to 32 out of 33. 22 out of 33. No, 32. Oh, 32. Yeah. Has somebody rolled Talix's. Uh, he hasn't taken well? any damage. Oh, yes, not? Nope. Oh. He hit the mushroom hit? and threw the ring. <laughs> yeah. How many hit does he roll for, for Bip? Uh, four. Four? Yeah. Okay. All done. Thank you. Okay. Um, with you guys having uh, uh, bandaged up your wounds and uh, um, sharpened your weapons and prepared your spells once more, um, basically, as soon as the bars are lowered, the shield vultures have just run right through. Um, their massive stone wings hitting the sides of the cave as they drag themselves through uh, the, the opening. Uh, and they end up ahead of you. Alright, let's go and forget about this place forever. Sounds good. And Brooke stands up and walks after the birds. Okay. As you all um, follow after the after the vultures, leaving behind uh, the undead dragon in its cage, you spot at the end of uh, this cave uh, what is. Um, a different kind of light. It's a natural light. Turn around the corner and uh, your your first thought is that you made it outside, but not quite. You can see really far and you can see trees ahead of you. It, it, it feels like you're looking at an area that is outside and it's brightly lit and you can even see the, the rays of sun shining down, but... There is still a ceiling above your heads, a rocky one. You're in a cave that has some holes in the ceiling here and there, just enough to let sunlight through. And there is vegetation here that is growing just fine, uh, despite the majority of this area being uh, actually in the shade. Uh, this opening, uh, this area that you stepped in is so large, uh, that you can see really, really far ahead of you. And in fact, almost directly ahead, just a great distance away from you. <clears throat> you see what at first almost strikes you as the dragon's skull just up ahead, but it's um, it's not this dragon's, this undead dragon's skull. Uh, that skull is massive. And it's really far, but if, with how big it is, you can see it very clearly. And it's partially... Um, like, the very base of it is into the ground, but the majority of it is outside and almost seems like it's staring at you as you step here. But there's more, not just trees, not just the skull in the distance and the holes that let the sunlight through. There are houses, buildings that have been uh, erected on the trees, in between the trees, almost like a kind of underground forest village. And as you're taking in the view, it, there is another element that really hits you. Uh, you saw those crystals in, in the cave earlier, uh, the ones that seem to be powering the cage that the undead dragon is in. But in this next area, the crystals, they are they're everywhere. They grow almost like trees and just as tall. Uh, they grow out of the ground, the grass almost seems to be made of strands of emeralds. And everything shines beautiful in the sunlight, even some of the buildings, no, the majority of the buildings, they're made out of gemstones. Everything glistening and colorful and beautiful and precious. And then there's another 
crystal that gets pointed at you. The tip of a spear made of a gemstone and uh, a handful of people, a handful of Ledarians looking at you, pointing their weapons at you. Each of these Ledarians, their box, they're made of gemstones. And that's where we'll end the session. <laughs> Are these Ladarians uh, roughly dragon-like? Not at all. Okay, and then one last mm. question. Uh, the giant skull, the giant stone skull, this is clearly from the thing that Orm remembers, uh, but is this big enough to be the skull of, like, the Stilling Dread? Yeah, it matches okay. the size of mm. the rest uh, So this of, is the skull uh, of the Stilling body. Dread, and this is also, Orm remembers, a giant stone skull, uh, which is, and we had to travel through the dust to reach it. And we have, we've traveled through a lot of dust. Oh. So this all adds up. Dang. Damn. I only remember these sharp details because this is all in my recap. <laughs> <laughs> Specific <laughs> details. Very useful. It's like, oh, Dragonodorian people that were hidden away from the Stilling Dread by the, the two deities. No, it's not Kyrie Lemuriel. Okay. Stilling Dread skull. Yup. Dust. <laughs> Plenty. Nailed it. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Wonderful. And that's it for today. Congratulations on surviving. Woo! Thank God. I think we did great. We did great, team.